Okay, I welcome everyone to another exciting moment on um, mineral mining. We want to present uh, the synchronization of of uh, Geomatic Studio with that of Geomatic uh, System, like GD10, GD20. GD10 actually supports measurement functions, which actually include 1D, VEX, SP, and IP sounding. Also 2D and 3D resistivity imaging, and that of IP imaging, with, with that of uh, high power IP surveys, and as well as underwater and cross hole surveys. The main measurement parameters uh, actually include the self potentials, the apparent resistivity, the time domain, the induced polarization. The system applies for resource prospecting, underground water mineral, engineering, geology, exploration, environmental detection, and so on. If you watch our previous videos we've released so far on Geomative System, you'll be able to understand some of its function and how um, it performs. Some people have been asking about the, some of the interactive software that the, the system actually used. Anyway, the Geomative System comes uh, with... Um, uh, a software application um, called Geomative uh, Studio. This Geomative Studio actually is um, a system is application you can use for your script management. It manages your scripts, you know, and you can actually use that to synchronize all your data from whatever you've actually gathered in the field onto your system. I've made a video on how the script actually set up so you can check some of our videos on our archives um, you can see some of the videos we made previously on the script management and script preparation for 2d for 1d and also for 3d tops in the field so today i just want to show us the connection connecting the gd20 or gd10 system to your geometric it actually uses usb port the connection comes uh, with a USB port and you can actually connect directly to your computer. You know, so mainly you put on your computer, the operation of uh, GD will stop. All the buttons will no longer work. Nothing will be operated again. The system will tell you not to operate the mainframe until all the data that have been transferred. So, Immediately you put on your system and it's connected to your computer and you open up the Geomative Studio. You see found GD10 device on COM3 will appear. Now you OK it. When you OK it, you see wait, please don't don't operate. So at this time it's trying to interface with your mainframe. Now it means that you want to actually download your data from your system, what you do is just go to function and synchronize. Now, there are something you need to understand here. If it is connected, you will look at this, you see the serial number of your mainframe will appear. If this number does not appear, actually nothing will work for you. So, this is the synchronization. So you look at the connected mainframe, that is the serial number of the mainframe. Then you look at this project information. This is the project in the mainframe. The whole project in the mainframe will appear on this region. Why this area carries some of the you know the, the information or the projects that are in the mainframe, the tags that are in the mainframe. So you need to click the ones you want. For example, these are all the projects. Now, if I click this as a project, it appears here. If I click this project, I click this project or this or this, you see all appearing. This is a text project, you see? So, now if I open up this, you see this appearing. Then look at this. You see the text name will appear here, the text method you use everything concerning the the project you've carried out the text id this is actually automatically generated 
and the project ID are automatically um, are also generated. The third zone numbers are automatically, these are actually automatically generated. So you see the created date, the created time, and the script type. It, this actually shows here that what you carried out here is 2D induced polarization. That is the test method actually used here. So that can actually be seen here. So now this is all the tax in your mainframe. So it depends on actually what you want to download. What do you want to download? You know, let's pick a line. These are all the lines that have actually been done. So let's just pick a line. This work. If we pick this, you can actually pick all at once just by holding. If you want to pick this, and you can highlight all and add. But for the purpose of this, if we just pick this and we'll add, once you click add, the tax uploaded to the Geomatic Studio, you see it here. It means that you've transferred from your mainframe to the Geomatic Studio. So this is actually the line two have been transferred to the Geomatic Studio. That is now in the software. So you have to upload. You see, start counting is uploading from the mainframe. You wait for it to upload. Is uploading. So you add, you add this, you upload. That will upload it. So you can close this. Then if you go to project mainframe, you see the whole the lines actually appear here i uploaded this see the uploaded lines here okay when you click any of the line you see all your data you see all your data you see the the stacking you see the your your p2 your p1 you see the c2 and c1 so actually all the data will appear here so you can see all the data collected on this line Now this shows your grounding, your grounding resistivity. This shows your grounding resistivity. And, and so actually from here, you'll be able to see the grounding resistivity that was used in the field. So you can see all the status here marked okay, okay. Assuming that there was an issue where someone didn't collect the right data, or possibly the ground resistivity is very high. From here, you can see that. So it can be manipulated. And you can see the test date and all that also correspond with some of this data. So from here, you can see that then this actually shows you everything uh, um, uh, about the line. This shows you the serial number of the mainframe. This shows you the line number, the script name, the method you used, the configuration, how many electrodes you use, the points you've actually gathered. It means that in DIX, we've gathered about 771 points. The channel you use, tacking numbers, you use your wavefront, and everything you actually um, needed to know that you've actually imputed from the original scripts all will appear here. So let's just look at this. From here, there are two things you can do. You can export your data. If you want, you can export original data. So any of these can work. So when you want to export, you click file. Then let's change. Let's assume I want to. <clears throat> I want to export this to my, you know, to any of these. And you say, okay. Then you have to tick whether you want it will appear in three, that file, Excel file, or text file. You do. <clears throat> Press done. So at this stage, you've actually exported this out of the mainframe. So what next you do is now depends on actually what you want to do. You wait for it to give you to prompt, to prompt you on, on go ahead. 
So, you see, oppression is executed successfully. That means it actually um, um, saved your data. So, you can look at So this is it. You can look at it, you see. These are all your data in Excel. All the data in Excel. These are all your electrodes, fixing and numbers. This is your stacking. These are your geometry factors calculated. This is your current, your volts. This is your resistivity, your XP. Everything you needed to do. So it depends on actually the data you are looking at or what you are looking for. These are all the tangibilities. The average M1, M2, and M3, but usually we we'll make use of this, we'll make use of this, and all that. So you can pick what you want and depending on the kind of application you are using. But if you are using other application that requires um, that support the DAT file, like the res, that is the DAT file for you, which you know you can. Um, open up you know you can open up your dat file so you can open up your dat file with this and you see your dat file now the way it is here it is actually already being prepared you don't even need to edit that is the principle format of this you don't even if you are using um, uh, Rex and other that application that actually um, uh, uses a DAT file is actually arranging in such a format that you don't need much processing in terms of arranging your data for you to start your you know your modeling then okay let's just look at this is the raw data from the system then let's just look at the uh, what okay assuming we are using it depends on the application you are using. Some are using OSIS Montage, some are using Rex 2D and other. Let's use Rex 2D to see the data. Then we can read the file. Um, we we'll save the file on our desktop, and that is the DAT file. We can pick it up from here and we we'll open it up. You see, it has read it. Your set data appears this. Now it has read our data. See, we can actually view it. Wow. You see? This is your data. This is exactly the kind of thing you see. You see, this is a very clean data. You can see how clean the data looks like. Just um, a few data on the surface. You can see these are just few because of surface the high surface resistivity you can look at here also so at this window actually you can look at bad data and actually try to remove them or but this i don't see that this uh, as a very significant thing you can look at here too so you can see how clean the data looks like though the cleanness of the data depends on the method you've actually used in co collecting your data the resolution the spacing and all that so you can actually say okay you don't want this data at this point and this point and all that so you can go on and um, make use of your data you can also transfer to other files and all that so that is just how to synchronize your mainframe with your your geomative studio and transfer your data from one software one application to the other so I think with this, you can actually see how the raw data from mainframe um, uh, Geomati actually looks like and how it works with the synchronization software. Thank you. And don't forget to ask any questions. Keep your questions coming if you have any. Thanks for actually watching us today. And have a blessed day.